So the topic tonight is um, about the use of letrozole for frozen embryo transfers. So um, this is called pregnancy outcomes after frozen thawed embryo transfer using letrozole ovulation induction natural or programmed cycles. Um, and essentially uh, what they did was do a retrospective study um, in a, uh, you know, good center out of the U.S. Um, where they took quite a lot of uh, uh, individual cases, 3,148 frozen embryo transfers, and they compared a group that was doing natural to a group that was doing program, meaning hormone replacement, to a group where they used letrozole. And then, and then they looked at a whole bunch of different outcomes and the great thing about this was they compared letrozole to natural and natural to programmed and um, programmed to natural as well. And, and so, and letrozole to program. So uh, it was great because they looked at all the different, um, you know, opportunities and options for how to, you know, kind of compare these different groups. Um, so I'll dive into what they did. Um, I'm just going to scroll through this. So it's a single university. They took anybody from 18 to 45. It was all autologous. So there were no egg donors. There were no frozen eggs used. They didn't take anyone that used any fancy HGH or stimulation for uh, the lining preparation or even HCG for the lining preparation. So it's kind of garden variety cycles, which was nice because this is what most people want to see. They don't want to look at the mix of, of everything. They want to look at the garden variety stuff. <clears throat> if there's one thing I would criticize, it's that their progesterone um, protocol is different. So uh, for the program cycles, they did down regulation with Lupron or something like that. They started people on oral estrogen or transdermal estrogen. So a little bit of variability there. Um, they got their estrogen up to get the, the lining to thicken. And then when the endometrial thickness reached seven millimeters, they started intramuscular progesterone. And then they added more oral or transdermal estrogen to keep the lining as thick as possible. They put the embryos in after you had completed five days, which is appropriate. In the letrozole cycles, what they did was that they followed the same protocol, but you got letrozole for the five days. They monitored your follicle development. Once you got to um, the point where you had an LH surge, six days later, they actually um, did your embryo transfer. And in these cases, they actually used vaginal progesterone and they used crinone. Um, so a, a little bit of a different approach to things, depending on um, whether or not you were getting the programmed uh, or or the natural, um, or you were getting the uh, the letrozole. So quite different. And if it was natural cycle, it was just six days after your LH surge, um, and they they cultured the embryos for one to two hours before transfer, which is a little bit short. We normally do three, but um, that's reasonable. They did their pregnancy test after nine days. Um, all of these were with blastocyst embryos, so no one was getting a day three. So bottom line, why is all this information important for you? This is real world. This is what we do every day. This is a reasonable protocol. This is clinically applicable. So I can say, yeah, this data applies to you because this data makes sense the same way we would do it for you. Okay, so what did they look at? Let's take a look at their study groups. So um, they had 1,407 in the program. They had 291 in the letrozole and 1,450 in the natural, in the natural group there. Um, age, they said it was statistically significantly different because the p-value is less than 0 0.1, uh, sorry, 0 0.01. But clinically, it's meaningless. There's no difference in five or six months, so that doesn't make a difference. Um, the age at which the embryos were frozen, same thing. It is statistically significantly different, but not clinically. BMI, a little bit higher in the letrozole group, um, but barely. Um, the natural group had a lower BMI than either the letrozole or the program group. So that was a little bit different, but that would favor the natural group and make the letrozole group be 
uh, and the program group have a, a lower chance. Um, AMH levels were uh, lower in the natural group, much higher in the letrozole and the program group. So that's important to remember just in terms of embryo quality, egg quality, so on and so forth. None of the other stuff was different until you got to uh, the diagnoses. They're all over the place. So it's kind of hard to go through that. Number of embryos transferred. The program group had a little bit more than the letrozole group. So 1.31, as you can see there, in the program group, 1.17 in the letrozole group, and 1.22 in the natural group. Obviously, we're not transferring fractions of embryos. This is the average after they measured everything. Reasonably even numbers of PGT, and there was no statistically significant difference. And this is also important because we got to compare this when you're looking at genetically normal embryos. Um, number of prior cycles, the program people had had more prior cycles. Letrozole and uh, the natural was pretty close. Duration of embryo freezing was not very different between the two. So we're gonna look at table two here. Table two is really important. Um, this is looking at all of the different cycles for all the people involved. So this is like your global approach to everything. Okay, so the pregnancy outcome, just looking at whether or not you had a positive beta. After they adjusted, they found that it was borderline uh, statistically significant for letrozole versus program. There was no difference for natural versus program. So those of you who are wondering, should I do a natural or should I do a program cycle? In this regard, for just a positive beta, there was no difference. And the letrozole versus the natural, there was a statistically significant increase in pregnancy if you did letrozole versus natural. Now, this is hugely important because a lot of people focus on, I shouldn't do a, a stimulated cycle. I don't want all the hormones. I want a natural cycle. But this is actually telling you that your pregnancy rate is going to be higher with a letrozole cycle than with a natural cycle. So very, very important data there. The next thing they looked at was clinical pregnancy. So when they looked at clinical pregnancy and they did the adjustments for the confounding variables, letrozole versus program was much higher natural versus program, there was no difference. Letrozole versus natural, it just missed significance. The 0 0.99 would have to be a one in order for it to be statistically significant. But I'm sure if they had bigger numbers, you would probably see a statistically significant benefit there. Ongoing pregnancy and live births, it's higher, as you can see right here, 1.11. So that's an 11% increase in the letrozole versus the program. So letrozole compared to the hormones is better. In the letrozole versus the natural, they did not see a statistically significant difference. Again, it's close, but you cannot say that it's statistically significant. Natural versus program, the natural actually did look almost like it was statistically significant, but again, just like the letrozole, it just missed it. In terms of miscarriage, miscarriage, there's no difference with the letrozole versus the other groups. But natural versus programmed consistently had lower rates of biochemical loss and a lower rate of clinical loss as well, meaning after you'd seen a heartbeat. So in this overall assessment, letrozole was beneficial versus programmed for pregnancy and for uh, clinical pregnancy it, and for ongoing live birth. It was borderline versus natural um, for being improved. When they looked at the loss rates, there's no difference in the letrozole, but there was an improvement in the rates with the letro uh, with the sorry the natural versus the program. So then they went one step further and they decided to break it down by looking at ovulatory women. So if you're ovulating already, what happens there? So the the numbers change, right? Now you've got 878 that are ovulating. In the uh, program group, 209 in letrozole, 1,411 in the, in the uh, um, natural group. So um, the numbers fall off in the pregnancy rate. None of them were statistically significantly different, but it's borderline again for letrozole versus natural. So very close, but didn't make it. No difference in clinical pregnancy for any of them, although again, letrozole versus program letrozole versus natural, very, very close. 
You do see statistically significant differences, however, in ongoing pregnancy and live births in this group. So 16% increase for letrozole versus programmed. Um, and you saw natural versus program was right at the borderline again. Letrozole versus natural, again, right at the borderline. So all of these kind of favoring either natural or letrozole, and letrozole seems to be the better option. Um, loss rates, same as before. The natural has a lower loss rate than the other ones, but the clinical loss rate in the ovulatory group is also lower with letrozole than with program. So program seems to have a higher risk of pregnancy loss and miscarriage. So if you're taking hormones, which is what everybody else is doing, it's not an ideal protocol for you. They then went down and did this for anovulatory women. And actually there were no differences in anything when they compared the programmed to the letrozole. You wouldn't do natural because they're anovulatory. So when they looked at the women that were not um, having normal periods, there were no differences in any of the outcomes kind of close for pregnancy, but not enough to call it even a, a trend there. So um, that requires further assessment. So Tarek, you can stop sharing. I'm going to flip back to the other one. Well, there's that crazy uh, view. I'll stop sharing here too. Yeah. So um, at the end of the day, the reality is that uh, it looks like letrozole actually is the way to go. It would appear that letrozole will give you a huge benefit over using a program cycle, and it's likely beneficial compared to a natural cycle. Um, and the theory behind it is that letrozole actually keeps your estrogen levels low. Estrogen can be pro-inflammatory, certainly too much estrogen frequently is inflammatory. Some of these women will have endo, adeno, all of these conditions that can lead to problems. And so you don't really want uh, that to occur. You want to keep the inflammation down. You want to keep the chances that the patient will have stimulation of those conditions down. So as a result, it's much better to focus on not having high levels of estrogen, high levels of inflammation, and letrozole is, is actually what does that trick for you. So is it a factor of fiction that letrozole can be better than natural or program cycles? It's actually a fact. It appears that it is beneficial in terms of your cycle outcomes compared to using a natural approach or a programmed approach. Um, if you do have to choose natural versus program, choose natural because your miscarriage rates will be lower and success rates are probably a little bit higher as well. Uh, so hope you enjoyed that part of the show. As always, make sure you like, uh, share, comment. We're always open to your comments and um, we're going to start taking your questions. And I think Tarek is going to be coming online to ask them.